Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and it's time for episode number three of Transducers. We're working uh, through the different parts of Transducers, and um, today we're going to talk about the third uh, part of the Transducer, and that is making things that are reducible. And we'll see in a second why this is actually useful. But to start with, let's create something, um, let's create a protocol uh, today, or a, a, a type that can be reducible that we can uh, reduce over. Um, so what we're going to do, there's two ways to go about this, and we'll start with the first way, um, and then we'll go on to uh, the, second, uh, the second way. But to start with, we're going to extend protocol, closure.protocols, and there's very little in closure core protocols, uh, but there is a few things, namely collection reduce. So we're going to extend this protocol, collection reduce, for uh, input stream. Okay. So what we're going to say is if you want to um, uh, reduce over an input stream, here is how you go about it. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So reduce is the name of the, um, the function, and we're going to do this. We're going to say uh, the input is uh, this. Um, and then we also are given a function and initial value. Now there's two arities to this function, and we'll cover that as well in just a second. But for now, uh, we'll just go through this. So first thing we want to do is we want to cast um, the input stream. Uh, let's see here. Uh, now this might not be completely necessary. I'm not sure if this is... Um, uh, this input stream here is um, type hinted, but and at any rate, we'll uh, we'll assume it's not for now. And then what we're going to do is simply loop over it, and um, we're going to create an accumulator and a value, uh, assign the accumulator to the value, and then we're going to let um, the character dot read from um, the input stream if equals ch negative one then we just simply want to return the accumulator otherwise what we want to do is we want to recur and the new accumulator is going to be the result of handing the accumulator and the character to f okay so what that does then is that if we hand an input stream to reduce, it now knows how to go about reducing over that. So let's give that let's give that a try here. Um, we will do reduce, uh, and we'll just uh, convert it to a character for today, and then our initial value. Um, actually, we need to. Um, We'll do conj. We'll just uh, add them all to a uh, to a vector. Our initial value is going to be the empty vector, and then what we're going to do is uh, do byte array uh, input stream get bytes and. Um, So it's actually two arities of this reduce function here, and we're going to uh, take a look at the the arity it's trying to call um, in a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, we'll switch this to transduce. So we're going to map char over it. Conj is going to be our reducing function, and then our input is byte array input stream. And it looks like we have a misnaming of the uh, method there. Okay, there we go. So as you see, um, it takes what we're doing is we're taking a string here we're converting it to bytes we're turning that bytes into an input stream and then we're transducing over that after we um turn everything to a, a character and as as you can see we could also do other things like uh, map to uppercase and now every character is uppercase right so this is all done without using lazy seeks or anything. And so let's go back up and look at this uh, this collection reduce. So what collection reduce does is it takes a the current collection, that's the first argument, 
of this in this case. f is a function to call on everything, whatever the thing is specific to this uh, function. And then value is the initial value, the init. We can almost rename that to init. So we re um, we set init to the initial value of the accumulator, and then we continue. So so what is exactly happening here? So this is composing a pipeline that turns um, an integer into a character and then calls to upper on that character. And then the last step in that that's injected is conj, right? So if we were to call conj, uh, if we were to um, uh, call conj with no arguments, then we get an empty vector. And that's what, be what becomes the init value here. So this is an empty vector, and that's the initial accumulator. The first time we call this, it takes the first character, turns it into a uh, first uh, character as an int, turns it into a character, calls uppercase on it, to uppercase, and then it calls conj to conj it into the vector, and we get a vector with one element in it. Then we recur and do the same thing over and over again. So when we create this whole pipeline right here, what we really get as a result are three functions nested into each other, right? One function calls the next, calls the next, calls the next, as well as this loop. And here, inside this loop, all of our accumulator, our accumulator just kind of sits on the stack, right? It's just, it's just a member that's local in the stack. We pass it through as arguments. We get the return value. We update the stack and we continue. There's really no allocation involved here at all besides, you know, whatever these characters are uh, represented as, however they're boxed or whatever. And that's what makes um, uh, transducers really fast, is it's just function calls and no big allocation of, of lazy seeks or functions inside lazy seeks or anything like that. Now, there's one more aspect of this, this. We have a problem here, and that is we need to support what's called early termination, right? So if we go here and we do take three and we run this, we get this mess. What the heck is this, right? Well. The way um, early termination is handled in reducers is with something called reduced. Um, so what this is, is, is a boxing. What you can do is you can say reduced 42, and it creates a reduced box or an object called a reduced object um, that contains 42. So it's just a box around it. Now, if we find that, we need to stop our reduction and just return that value. So what we want to do here instead is uh, perhaps something like this. Uh, there's multiple ways we can do it. One way we can do it is the following. We put a if reduced. These are part of core. So if the um, accumulator is reduced, then we deref the accumulator and return that and stop our recursion. Okay. So when we run that, and now we run this transduce, we get the first three characters of hello world as uppercase. So that's really all it is. We have to make sure that every time we do a step in our reduce that we haven't gotten a reduced object back. So if we take a look at take, what we'll see here is in the inner part here, don't worry about vswap, just think of it as an atom for now. But basically every time we get another value, we decrement the count over and over and over again. And then when we finally get to the last item, we're no longer positive when the, 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 um, the count that we're, our current count that we're at has reached zero, then we re it boxes, boxes the result as reduced, and that tells us to terminate the entire pipeline. Right. Okay. So, that's, that's the three parts. We can see the three parts of the entire system right here. We have, the, um, we have how we build a collection. We have what we want to do to each item in the collection. And then here at the end, we, want, we have um, what we, how, how we go over the items in the collection. But what's interesting is that this part right here defines how we drive the entire thing. Right? So this could be anything. I mean, here we're reading from an input stream. So this could be a stream re reading off the disk. It could be re uh, reading from the network somewhere. Um, it could be anything. We could even do this with a core async channel. Right? I've actually done that before, where we could extend 
core async channels, and instead of read here, it does a blocking take. And then we just drive it using the current thread that we're on to pull items off the core async channel until it exits or until we get reduced. All right, so um, what's also interesting about this is that we can do any number of um, things here. I mean, like when I say building collections, I mean, all this stuff doesn't really have to be building. We could map this back into an int, right? So we have all these integers, and then once again, just sum them up, and there we go. Um, so, so that's those are the three parts, like I said. Now, there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do with these. Now, the next in the next tutorial, what we're going to cover what's called stateful transducers, um, and you can see this like this. Uh, and uh, we actually want partitional, and we can't do that anymore. There we go. Let's see here, and uh, we can't. So here we go get back to our original example. Here we go. So partition all is really weird in the way it's constructed. And that's what we're going to handle in the next tutorial. We're going to look at how you would actually build something like this, as well as we'll take a look at the new volatile um, stuff added to closure. They're really weird and used in a very specific way. But there's this whole other aspect of transducers that we need to talk about dealing with state. So that'll be the next thing. But for now, what I encourage you to do is to just think of all the things that you could build just with these three concepts. How much of your program could simply be a pipeline type thing? How much of it could simply be a builder function like we have up here with this um, uh, with the string builder, the string reducing function? And how much could you actually do with just having um, our uh, transducer, uh, having a um, irreducible? Uh, that, that reminds me, though. So we, we do need to talk a little bit about the other arities. So there's there's about four ways that you could go about doing this. The protocol method is maybe slightly, not much, slightly slower um, for doing um, this uh, reduction. The other thing we could do is um, extend closure lang i reduce, and it has fun methods called um, uh, reduce on those. If you want to look up the source code for a closure line guy reduce Java, look at that. It's it's just an interface that allows um, the the core closure data structures to implement this interface and reduce um, in in specific ways. But the signatures are pretty much the same. There's also a signature in here um, that does not have an init value. And we're just going to assert false here like this. So if we extend this, um, let's see here. And we, we uh, let's uh, take this code right here. Um, reduced will call this other arity in the case that you do not give it an init value. Um, sorry, reduce. So here's reduce, right? Now, if we take this init value out, um, we get this wrong number of args too passed to um, this function. Okay, so here we go. So this is assert failed false. I, I had the uh, structuring of this wrong. It's kind of weird how protocols want to be extended sometimes. Anyway, so the problem is here is that we don't have an init value, right? This method, I, I, I'm torn whether or not to recommend it worrying about implementing the, the, the second method without an init. The fact is, is that most of the time you'll either be doing transduce with a reducing function like cons or something else, or you'll be using reduce with an initial um, value. If you don't have an initial value, um, then the idea kind of is that you should take the first item from the collection and assume that that is your uh, the, your accumulator, um, if perhaps for like in the case of add, right? So, so you can think of it this way: if we had, if we had um, vectors uh, range ten, so yeah, let's, let's do 
3 to 10. There we go. This will make a little more sense. So we have this vector. If we were going to reduce over this with plus, there's two ways we could go about it. We could start with an accumulator of 0 and add 3 to it, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or our initial accumulator value could be 3, and then we add 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is, to me, a much less generic, highly specific way of doing reduction that doesn't work in cases like conj. I mean, conj 3, 4 doesn't make any sense. Um, so I really don't recommend that you worry about this too much um, unless you need it. I mean, if you're trying to do something that would that somehow work, would work fine that way, that's fine. But that's, to me, a kind of a leftover um, uh, vestige of, of an old way of doing it in closure. So just, just don't worry about that much. I don't actually ever use that arity of the function. Um, so, but you'll see that in the closure code um, in the collection reduce stuff. So it's good to be aware of it. So there you go. That's the, the tutorial for today. Uh, those are the three parts of transducers. Good first overview of the uh, of transducers and why they're a big idea. Um, highly open, highly extensible, highly generic. And what we're going to do in the next couple tutorials is just talk about how these integrate into all the different systems. We'll start with um, stateful transducers and then move on to how this applies to core async, how we can talk to, uh, uh, you know, over the network with these things, how we can put data onto the network. It, there's just all sorts of things. We'll even dive into how to update our logic programs to use transducers um, and, and so forth. So that's the tutorial for today. Thank you for watching.